What's going on guys, Victor here. I am in beautiful Cape Cod, Massachusetts. It's my good buddy Jeffrey right here. And uh, this is actually his vessel. We got Rene, which is one of his deckhands. Chad, who's a chef and deckhanding today. We're gonna show you guys how to catch lobster today, how to clean them, how to cook them. And we're also gonna talk about the whole commercial process, which I think is fascinating. And let's get to it. Breeding season. So they get a lot of eggs this time of year. So they hold the eggs inside of them for nine months. They hold them under the tail for nine months. So it's pretty much an 18 month process for them. So come springtime, they'll just be about dropping them. That's why there's a lot of fuzzy eggs in May and June. Come July and August is when they all drop them and there's that many more lobsters to keep because they all drop their eggs. We a lot of people. So you just use a little gas? Yeah, wrap the buoy. So this here is a female, has a V-notch in it, so this lobster can never be kept. So that, that lobster can never be kept again. And if this had no eggs, you can't keep it because you can't prove that it was a female with breeding because it has no tail. Eggs in the past, so they notch it. So when they molt, when they remolt, there's still a notch in that tail. Yeah, that notch stays know, with them for life. It, it fills in occasionally, like eventually. down the road eventually. Once, once it's dull and someone else catches it, hopefully they'll notch it just so we can rebreed and keep the fishery going. Don't be a female, don't be a female. It's a female, but it may be... Don't be an egg. No, oh. Let's no see. notch? No notch, but let's see if it's oversized. But can we keep... Oh, you can be oversized. You can be oversized. Small claw, but this is oversized due to the... How do you tell if it's oversized? It's it's bigger than the gauge. Oh, the back it's shell. Bigger than the gauge. Yeah, the back shell is bigger than the gauge. Four pounder. Four, four and a half. It's a big one. Big girl. Big girl. Same girl. We got a combo package going on there. A little bit of everything. We got trout heads and salmon heads and whitefish heads. Salmon heads and whitefish heads. Mm -hmm. They come in through here. Okay. This is called the kitchen. They eat and they walk into the parlor, which is the back side. They go into this way. And some people say they can't come out, so they can. So that's why we haul every couple days to keep the bait rotating and keep the lobsters that haven't found their way out if they find their way out. Just like our lobsters down in Florida that you guys see us dive for, they're always under rocks or ledges or any type of structure. So I imagine these lobsters are pretty much the same. To hide from predators, they like structure. And the lobster trap, they don't know. They think it's a nice little home full of free food for a week. And they're going on vacation. Little do they know that Jeff's about to haul them up and you guys are going to eat them for dinner. So the whole theory of whether or not they can get out. I mean, if I was a lobster and there was food in there, I would stay in there for weeks. You're good to go for the next trap. Wish everybody could smell why lobsters are so expensive, because it's the smell right here, that's why. So she takes the old one out, in with the new. Yeah, it's another V-notch. Um, it had eggs in the past, it has eggs again. When they get new shells, they molt, but the V-notch stays. And um, obviously it has eggs again, so. It worked. I run about 115 traps. A lot of guys out here do 800. 800? Yeah. You just need a bigger boat for that? Or? You need a bigger boat, you need the time. So how do you know which trap is yours? Is it just based on the buoy color or what? Just based on the buoy color. So is it up to the fishermen to pick their yeah. color? Yeah. Yeah, they pick the color, they pick the design. They even want a design, they can go straight one color, they can have stripe, they can do whatever they want, but every buoy has to be the same. And you have to display your buoy when you're hauling. So you pick them up and you try to grab them by the arms like that so they're nice and tight together. And then you just band one. You band the other. The bigger ones with the big claws, they usually get two bands because they're strong enough to open them. But after that, you plop them in the water and you're done. 
Some may have none, some may have six. We call our lobster lobster in Florida, and people are always like, that's not a lobster. You guys don't have claws on your lobsters. Well, look at this. Look at how small these little baby claws are. I mean, body-wise, our Florida lobster look very similar to a Maine lobster. They got the same kind of tail, the fan tail. They do the same kind of backwards motion. You got your legs. The only thing ours are lacking are the claws. So all these circles are my previous tracks. And where there's a circle is my previous circle of last time hauling. So I know where they are. If it's foggy, a lot of people run numbers. I just, I just go by my tracks. I always have tracks available. That's a nice two pounder. So I know some of them are really red. Yep. There's some color changes in some of them. So those bigger boats with 800 traps, they can easily check them every day because by the time they get to the next day, that set of 100 or 150, whatever it is that they can check in a day, it's already been soaking for a couple days and it's given the lobsters a chance to get in there and kind of settle down. Look at the size of this one. Big female. I mean, the claws alone probably weigh like a pound or two. And we can't keep this one because you guys see those eggs? Those are all little baby lobster, potentially. And you can't keep females, which I think is pretty smart because then you're taking out, you know, the breeders of the population. So we let them go. And uh, even their, their legs are kind of different than our Florida lobster. You kind of see how they all look like little mini claws, but an absolute just unit. I mean, look at the size of this tail. This thing is huge. Yep. You guys see this claw, either she got in a fight with someone or a predator or something tried to eat it because it's, she's missing half her claw. Oh, okay, so a couple of things about this lobster. Number one, so this lobster is missing its claws right there, massive tail and a V-notch, so you know it's a female that had eggs at one point. Lobsters and crabs, their shell does not grow with them. They basically, they make a new shell, I don't know if it's every few weeks or every few months, but they'll expel the old shell, it's called molting, and when they're doing that, their new shell is really soft. Like right now, you guys can't feel it, obviously, but I can squish this. Lobster are normally super hard, but this one's very soft because it just got done molting. So in a few days or a few weeks, it'll start to harden and uh, it'll be back to normal and then it'll stay in this shell for however long and then it'll molt again as it grows, which is kind of neat. And this one's not very bright. As we've been going on with the day, some of them are super red and bright, some of them are real black, hints of green on them, which is a very neat animal. And obvious, I don't need to explain why you put a ban on them, because these lobsters are going to be sold live. So you got this banning station tray, whatever you want to call it right here. There's a chute, and right underneath us there's a, a live well, or a holding tank as you would say, that's constantly flushing in new salt water, because when Jeff goes to sell these, they're sold live. Shellfish, crabs, um, they're not like fish, they decay very fast on ice. Fish you can leave on ice, but shellfish are best sold live. Cost involved, each tote of bait is 60 bucks a tote. I go and get two totes of skins, so that's 120 bucks plus a tote of heads. Another 60 bucks, so I'm looking at 180 bucks. Having her come out is another, anywhere between 120 to 150 dollars a day. So we're looking at 300 bucks a day. Fuel, I'm looking at anywhere between about 15 gallons a day so you're looking at 45 so you're really looking at anywhere between three 350 bucks a day to go fishing everyone's like oh my gosh you make so much money lobster yeah then you add in all the expenses 
you're looking at 700 bucks a week just for me. All the bigger guys spend a couple thousand dollars in bait every time. Every week their bait bill is about thousand, two thousand dollars a week. It all balances out on expense wise. You have a sixty thousand dollar rig, you have a twenty thousand dollar license, you have hundred dollar trap. It all balances out to a normal job, but you only work, work six months a year. It's hard work. Oh yeah. Everybody from the outside never looks at it as a job and it's like it's not just going out on the boat and getting lobsters, it's everything <laughs> else behind it. You guys see how flat clear well, flat and calm it is behind me. It's, I mean, it's gorgeous. There's not a breath of wind, but you're out here when it's three to four, three to five. You're getting splashed in the face. You're getting salt fish and white fish juices all over you. You end up coming home smelling like a two week old rotting crab. And, you know, people wonder why seafood's so expensive. And it's, it's this, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're on a 26 foot boat or a 70 foot boat. Fishing is tough, tough work. So on that one trap we ended up with a couple three and a half pounders and a two pounder. Eight fifty a pound. In my hands about 60, 70 bucks. But there's a lot of zeros out there. So that 60, 70 bucks average traps, that might average out to ten dollars a trap, not seventy dollars a trap. So look at the claw on this thing. Ginormous. Alright guys, that is the end of the day. Around 100 traps. Check this out. Wow. How many think we got? 80 to 100 pounds. The season's coming to an end, so a couple more hauls, we'll be done. So Jeff is selling the majority of them, but lucky thing about uh, today is we get to take some home for dinner. All right, so Chad is cleaning up the lobster right now. He's gonna separate it into two things. So I know lobster is delicious on its own, but you know, everybody just steams lobster and dips it in garlic and butter, but you gotta spice up your life. And that's why we got Chad over here. Let's get a little creative. Yeah, you gotta have fun with it. Anyone can steam a lobster and dip it in some butter. So we're spicing up your life a little bit. If you wanna eat it just in butter, go for it. If you wanna try something else, then <laughs> try this. And don't get me wrong, lobster is, I would compare it to a steak. Like you don't overdo a really good piece of meat, but we're not doing that much to it. We're just gonna spice it up a little bit. So we'll just split it and uh, saute them up. Florida lobster, I love you, but you gotta grow some claws. That's interesting about Maine lobster versus Florida lobster. Florida lobster, we generally take the tail off. It freezes very well. You cannot tell the difference between a one-year-old frozen lobster and a fresh lobster, I promise you. It does not taste different, but it's a lot chewier and um, firmer. Maine lobster, really sweet and tender. These guys say Maine lobster does not freeze as well. And we freeze our lobster raw. They always cook their lobster before they freeze it, which I find pretty interesting. You put any tomato in it? You put any peppers in it? Nope. Bailey, not from New England. It's not even. Watch, how are you? Can you feel this? Watch this. Yeah. Watch this. This What's is that? how you know you're What's good. Watch you know his head swivel. What? 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 I'm cutting. I'm cutting. I'm cutting. I'm cutting. Done. There you go. Done. What else? What else you need cut? Oh, we didn't look at this. They're all the same. Look at this. They're the, all the oh, same width. Yeah. This is Chad right here. I'm his what's, buddy. What's, I'm like, what's the Jeff's restaurant? Buddy. It's called Three Restaurants in Franklin, Mass. It's a free restaurant, Franklin Mass. It's a great restaurant. This guy it's a dynamite kills restaurant. it in the kitchen. I'll have that link below. A lot of the commercial guys this year, especially since COVID hit, it was hard for them to sell. Make a living. To make a living. So a lot of guys like Kevin as well, you guys started selling directly to the public, which I think is awesome. Yep. You know. So like I said, I'll have that link below. If you guys are in the New England area, check out his Facebook page. Split them, get them ready for grilling. Nice. Clean up the uh, the tract out of them. Got them all nice and clean. So, um, Jeff, if I could have you help me out and just pour uh, some of your uh, seasoned olive oil. Just uh, not too heavy, just a little bit here. And go in. I'm gonna um, 
I'm gonna toss these off you back up one second so I get you thank you all right we got a little oil on there got a little uh, paprika crushed red pepper some other secret seasonings I can't tell you no I'm just kidding just uh, garlic crushed red pepper <laughs> black pepper cayenne pepper habanero pepper <laughs> habanero pepper no I'm just kidding not really but it's there Lobster in the harbor with some pasta. Lobster from the harbor. Lobster guy. Try, try to say lobster. Lobster. Oh, wow. I Just am like from that. Boston. Like I, I'm from Cape Cod. I'm not from Boston. Can you say lobster? Lobster. Lobster. <laughs> you lobster. tried hard. You tried really you tried, hard. He was like, okay, okay, breathe in. <laughs> lobster. <laughs> Lobster. Lobster. All right. Park, I, I park can... the car in Harvard Yard. No, nah, man. Just take the lobster out of the trap and throw it on the grill. Let's go. <laughs> You're not parking the car and you're making fun of me for my accent. This is folk. All right. Lobster's out of the trap. We're, we're not laughing at you. We're, we're laughing with you. You're laughing with me. I hear you. All right. No, I know. I know how to say lobster. L O B S T A H. Lobster. <laughs> lobster. <clears throat> so we're going to heat up the uh, wok. We're going to uh, cook Italian food and uh, uh, Chinese saute pan. It's fusion. Asian fusion. Fusion. Yeah, there you go. Fusion. That's a nice looking walk. Where'd you get it? Um, oh, this guy I met today. I was out lobstering. This guy, Victor, he came up from Florida and he just happened to bring his walk. <laughs> what are the chances? I needed a walk and he brought a walk. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. Gonna get, just cook up some fried cowboy. Again, right out of... Cape Cod Bay. Anybody bring any of those trulies out here? Or you just <laughs> left them in the house. What happened? So we're gonna put our um, oil in the pan. <laughs> Butter. But we're gonna put the oil in the pan. It's a little solidified because it's a little chilly out here in October. So the the oil solidified. It's a little funky it's like, looking. It's called yeah, yellow oil. Oh, yellow oil. Um, what are we gonna do? One on one. We'll do a couple and then come back to this. The, uh, the lobsters don't take too long. Throw them right up. Lay them out. Get them. All right, so we're sauteing this up here. Get our peppers going. Gonna wilt the little garlic. This is fresh pressed garlic. This isn't that store bought stuff in the brine that we talked about earlier, Victor. I do have somewhere around here some crushed red pepper. I just, I can't leave the grill at this time. Oh, you want it? So I just wonder, you know, if anyone has seen it. Anybody seen the crushed red pepper around? Woo, crushed red pepper arrives. Because we need more pepper for this. Make it hot and spicy. The grill's lit and so am I. Woo, there it is. <laughs> there it is. It's another dad joke just threw at you. Write that one down. Wait till I put my dad's sneakers on. I don't even have the dad's sneakers on. Yeah, where's your new balances? Yeah, I, they're in the truck. Those are his shoes. <laughs> I got my new balance. Right there? I got the dad. I got the dad shoes. I got it. Don't make me break it out. You made that yourself, right? I did. Yeah, I just I, I made a um, I guess you'd say a quick marinara. Um, simmered it down for about 45 minutes an hour. Some nice uh, sweet samazano tomatoes. I'm gonna add some crushed red pepper. This is fra diavolo. It's supposed to be a little spicy. A little sherry, lobster, broth. Kind of deglaze the pan a little bit. Also homemade by you, right? Yeah, the stock, yeah. Yep, take the uh, the lobster bodies, roast them with a maripois, which is uh, carrot, celery, onion, beaks, bay leaves. Um, simmer that with sherry wine. Get your plan this. So, this will help. Cook the pasta in the house, and uh, just because you know, just to plan ahead, cook the pasta in the house, uh, chill it down, toss it with oil so it won't stick. What kind of pasta is Cooking, that again? Uh, Papa Deli. Got another oh. bay leaf in the back. Oh, uh, you don't, well, you don't like bay leaves? They well, scare you? Took you took out the last one. Oh, well, I just, you know, I'm gonna, you know what? Here, oh. I hope you get that on your plate. <laughs> I hope you get that on your plate. <laughs> All right, you're gonna be like that. I thought you wanted to take them out. I did, I did, but then you know, you told me I had to, so then I don't want to. No, I don't want to. Like I'm like a four year old. I'm like a four year old. You tell me to do something, I'm not going to do it. Oh, you know what? Put that other one back in. Nope. nope. <laughs> just a chilly October night, you know, everything just you know, takes a little bit longer to warm up. 
Earlier, you asked me, you said, hey, Chad, make sure you bring the chopped parsley. You were, like, all concerned. Remember, we had that conversation oh, yeah. on the boat, right? Yeah. You know, we were like, you're like, hey, you have chopped parsley, right? It's an Italian dish. Yeah, I got Italian parsley, Victor. Yeah, we got it. It's right there. You're in a uh, walk. It should be some cilantro. Listen, pal, we got to adapt. <laughs> we're on Cape Cod. <laughs> we're on Cape Cod in the off season. The stores are not <laughs> fully stocked, as we saw when we tried to buy... Whatever it was we tried to buy earlier. Sriracha. Sriracha. Hey, you're wearing a white shirt. You might want to back up. <laughs> this, this handle is feeling a little, wow. little wonky. I just trashed your grill, Jeff. Sorry. It's all right. Yeah. What happened? You're making fun of me again. <laughs> I'll take my... I'll take Victor's walk and I'll go home. <laughs> If you guys haven't liked this video by now, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. There you go, right? If you guys want to see Chad back on the channel, smash the like button right now, comment below, because this guy's killing it. I mean, it. It. entertaining. We'll have fun. Dinner. We'll have fun. We'll get a grill going. Dinner and a show. Dinner and a show. <laughs> Dinner, and a show. Dinner and a show right there. Fresh off the grill, fresh off the saute, right out of the walk, right into Jeff's kitchen. Can't. That looks good. That looks good. Getting there right down. Wow. Got the parsley going. Woo! Got a little. It's the best looking plate of Cape Cod lobster I've ever seen. Yeah, no? Go for it, go for it. You got them, use them. Final touches. Oh man. Oh goodness. That is a meal for a king right there. Woo! Let's get some quick first impressions. That's good. Mm-hmm. I'll say it. You think Capital Grill's good? <laughs> no. This <Yeah>. is good. <laughs> Renee's always just speechless. I got nothing to say. I'm just, just going to keep eating. Get some lobster. So far, the sauce is amazing. Homemade pasta. So good. You want another towel to go with it? Look at this. Watch. Come right out of the shell. Wow. It's just so good. B big thank you to my buddy Chad over here. Absolutely killed it. Nice. With the lobster. Look at that. What's that? Your second, third helping? Third. At least. You just dragging out of the pan right across the rim. I would never let that out of the kitchen with the, <laughs> no. the sauce on the rim like that, right? Yeah, where's the paper towel? Oh, at? where's the paper towel? You gotta wipe that out. No, but for no, real, guys, yeah. Chad killed it. Big thank you to Jeff who made all of this possible. Renee, baited every single trap. I did. Couldn't have done it without you. Right. Babe helped film, and you guys can also check out her video in the description box below. You guys already know it's good. Everybody tried it, so uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you for letting us do videos like this, being able to travel all around the country for you guys. None of it is possible without you guys, so seriously, thank you from the bottom of Brooke and I's hearts. Till the next one, see ya.